What's up guys, Phoenix here, and in this video I'm going to be showing you guys the new combo that I mentioned in both of my previous Dragoonity deck profile videos for the July 2015 ban list, both in the longer explanation filled uh, deck profile and the shorter minimal explanation deck profile, I touched on a new combo that I came up with. I came up with it way back in September Dragon Ruler format of 2013 when Ravine was still legal. Um, when Shadow Spectres came out was when I originally came up with this, but I didn't really do anything to make videos at that time. Then Ravine got banned, and then there was never really any reliable way to do it until now, and there was never really a need to do it because Necros didn't exist. But ultimately, this new combo is a three-card combo involving Dragon Ravine, Dragoonie Phalanx, and Dragoonie Armor Mystician, just like the old days, but its ending field is much different. It puts a Divine Dragon Felgrand, a Hieratic Dragon King of Atum, and a Red Eyes Darkness Metal Dragon on your board at the end of the combo. It yields you with either one to two extra cards by the end of the combo, depending on, you know, the route that you decide to take with it. And it, uh, it's very easy to get kick-started, and ultimately it's just a combo that was basically catered to me towards beating the Necros matchup, because you need to keep yourself from getting Trish, and you need to be able to attack reliably under a Valk. Um, as soon as you can attack through a Valk, you typically have game in the Necros matchup as long as, you know, you have enough damage on board and this deck doesn't struggle to put damage up, it just struggles to try and get through Valk and Felgrand is what stop, what, you know, gives you that added ability. Now, there are multiple different ways to start this combo. The most generic way to start it, the one that we should all know by now on all the different routes that it can take is Ravine Flanks Mistleton. Only three cards. So in your five card opening hand, it should be very easy to, you know, see this. And of course, this isn't the only combination of cards that you need to do this. You could also have Ravine Phalanx Garuda, Ravine Phalanx Instant Fusion. You could have Ravine Ducks Garuda plus any other card to discard. You'll be taking a minus one off of that, so it'll only be a plus one at the end of the turn. Ravine Phalanx Instant Fusion plus another card to discard. Um, Ravine, Ravine Ducks Instant Fusion, I'm sorry. Um, and another card to discard to put Phalanx in the grave off of Ravine. And then you could go outside of needing Ravine, and you could have Phalanx Mistleton Instant Fusion, Phalanx Instant Fusion Garuda, Ducks Foolish Mistleton Instant Fusion or Garuda, and then Ducks Divine Lance Mistleton Instant Fusion or Garuda. Um, you by no means need Dragon Ravine for this combo. You have so many other combo pieces cluttering this deck up, and so it's ultimately just you know something you can do. And it's obviously a combo that can be tweaked based off whether or not you have Soul Charge. If you have another combo piece in your hand yada 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 you can always just add things onto it you can always it all just depends on how you build your ladder stepping up into your uh, into your higher um, boss monsters because that's the way this deck operates the way this deck functions in its combos is that you establish like three cards and then you just start laddering them up and upgrading them into bigger things essentially for free but as I said, it's a three-card combo, and the one I'm going to be showing you in this video is Ravine Flanks Mistleton, just because it's the generic, most generic one. I've done videos on Ravine Flanks Mistleton combos in the past, so you guys should have some sort of basic understanding at this point of the different routes it can take. Um, so ideally, you'll want to open this with two traps. If you're going second and you are able to do this, obviously three traps is better. And the only reason I put Mind Crush in this hand is because sometimes if you're going in blind and you don't know you're playing against Necros, if you don't have Mind Crush and you're able to set your entire hand, sometimes you just don't do the Harpy Harpa search at the end of the turn, um, and you'll just put something else in the grave or do something else to just unload your hand, like search Garuda mid combo or something like that. But if you do have Mind Crush, then you almost 100% always go for the Harpa search for ducks because that will let you set your two traps. Then you'll get your duck search, and then Mind Crush will be live. But anyway, the basic way you start this combo is the same way you've started almost all the combos in the past. You go Ravine. Phalanx for Ducks. Any different combination of the combo cards that you have is just going to make it to where you can put two sixes on the board, one of them being a Gay Dog. That's essentially what you're going to be going into. You'll Ducks bring back the Phalanx, you'll tribute the Phalanx off of Mistletoe in this situation. I personally like this opening the best. Um, I don't like having Garuda or Instant Fusion in, during these combos because that uses an extra Vajrayana. This entire combo, if you do it with with Ducks, Phalanx, and Mistleton as your starting combo pieces, this entire combo only uses one Ducks and one Vajrayana, so that leaves you very strong plays for the next two subsequent turns when you're, you know, getting your Duxes. But anyway, from end of this point, you go into Gaydurg, just like the start of all your, your previous combos go, and Gaydurg will add Zephyros to your hand and then put it in the grave. So it'll just go straight to hand, straight to grave. 
Everything here should be looking very familiar. It's the same start to all the other Unity combos that you've ever done involving, you know, ditching Zephyros off of Gadarg in the mid-combo range. So, you'll get Red Eyes, and then Red Eyes is going to bring back your Gadarg. Now, at this point, since we have the Mind Crush and we're 100% committed to getting the Search at the End phase, you'll add Harpist to your hand off this Gadarg and then send it to the graveyard. So that's going to net you a plus one at the end phase for your ducks. Now your red eyes is used. So red eyes will get bounced to your hand for Zephyros and you'll take your 400. And at this point you will banish the Atum and special summon red eyes. Now up to this point everything that we've done has been the same starting combination for all of the other Dragoonity combos involving Ducks, Phalanx, Mistleton. At this point, if you wanted to go down the old route of making Ptolemy and Stardust, you could still do that. All you'd have to do is bring back Phalanx off the Red Eyes, Synchro up into Vajrayana, and then go from there. But in this situation, what we're going to do instead is instead of bringing the Phalanx back, we're going to bring back the Mistleton off of the Red Med. So the Red Eyes has been used a second time, and now you have two sixes again. So this is where the second Atom comes into play. So you make this second Atom, and that's why this second Atom is mandatory, if you want to build the deck around performing this combo. You'll detach off of Atom, and now at this point you may be noticing we're missing Phalanx, and we also don't have a way to get two eights on board. That's where Leviton comes into the combo. Leviton is needed for this step, because you special summon it out of your deck, and you use his effect to re-equip the Phalanx. And now at this point, you special the Phalanx, and now you have the Phalanx back in circulation again, so... You'll make your first Vajrayana of the entire combo with the Vajra with the uh, Zephyros and the Phalanx. That will bring back the Phalanx, and now at this point, you can go into any of your eight level eight dragons. You don't want to go against Crim into Crimson Blader unless you know what the matchup is and you know that Blader is absolutely dead. But ideally, you want to be going into one of these just because if you detach it off of Felgrand, that you can bring it back during the next turn. Typically. I always go for Stardust first, just because I want to keep the Scrap Dragon in my extra deck so I can normal summon ducks and go into it next turn. And Stardust is always just the safest card to bring back off of Red Med. So at this point, you'll just overlay those two into Divine Dragon Felground. Now at this point, we have six cards, so we're at a plus one overall. The Leviton got us to that plus one. So you accept these two cards, and then at the end of your turn, you would add a Ducks to your hand off of the Harpy Harpist. So you started with five cards and you end with seven and Ducks is already in your hand so the stress is off of a ravine for at least the next turn. Meaning that, you know, anything that your opponent does, this obviously is kind of weak to Regeki, but you can obviously, if you have any other combo piece in your hand, like any other dragon that you can discard mid-combo instead of getting Harpist, get a Garuda instead, you can end this with uh, with having Stardust on board with the Felgrand and the Red Eyes instead of leaving the Atum up. There's a couple of different variations that you can do. Uh, there are a lot of actually different variations I could do. I could go and do like a 45 minute long video of all the different variations that this combo does. Uh, but essentially, this is still a very safe place to be in. Because even if your opponent, like, the best out your opponent's going to have in this field is like Raigeki or Dark Hole. And even if they do that, you'll typically just use Felgrand on the Red Eyes, and then use your traps to make sure it doesn't go anywhere for the rest of the turn, and then Red Eyes will bring back Stardust at the start of your next turn, and then Ducks can be normal summoned, and start going from there. Um, so, like, you'll still have quite a lot of resources, even if you get Dark Hole to Regeki, because you just got a plus two. So, if they Regeki or Hole you, they're only going to be taking away the Atom, which wasn't really doing anything on the next turn anyway, except giving you just another combo piece that you didn't really need and it's going to be taking away the Felgram, but the Red Eyes is going to be still in the field and untouchable. Um, so that's ultimately the way this combo is performed, and there, as I said, many different ways to open this combo. There are many different points in the game you can perform this combo. Um, this combo has a very high recovery rate as well. It's a very high protection rate. Of course, it sucks not having Stardust on the board, but Stardust will be on the board at the very start of your next turn, because even if your opponent doesn't do anything on their turn, that warrants a Felgrand negation, as soon as you enter the end phase, I typically detach Stardust or Leviton from Felgrand and target the Red Eyes, so that during my next turn, I have the Stardust in the grave, I can just bring it back off the Red Eyes and go from there um, during my combos. But ultimately, that is it for this combo. It's very easy to get started, but not a lot of people that I've showed this to at events that came to talk to me, when I would show it to everyone who was interested, 
and almost no one really could see the big picture of how it ended in a Felgrand. A lot of people have been trying to make Felgrand in the past, and they'll use like two level eight synchros. But that's not very economical, especially, you know, in a going first situation where it's your first combo of the game, it's your first play of the game. But once this combo sticks, you typically have just a very large safety net and you can pretty much do whatever you want for the rest of the game because Red Eyes plus Leviton, the Ducks plus Leviton and Grave, anything will give you access into like Trident Dragon and to steal the game from there. The Red Metal keep bringing back all your things, Felgrand keep protecting them. You have traps, you have relevant cards, you're fueling your mind crush by putting the ducks in your hand, meaning that you can play these good cards against decks like Necros and Burning Abyss and still have them live without having to hold certain cards in your hand, which was what was awkward about this deck in the past playing mind crush and uh, things of that nature. Because the way this deck operates is you want to put everything you can into investing in your board and then wall up with traps. Well, the problem with mind crush is it's a really good trap for this and last format and it causes you to hold back some of your potential, you know, output ceiling. And that was very, that was very unnatural for the deck. It was very unnatural to play it, and it felt really weird. But now the deck can actually function with Harpist and these cards in a method that does this rather efficiently. But anyway, that's going to be it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you guys take this combo, take what anything I've taught you or anything you've learned, and tweak it around and use it to you know the best of your ability. I always want this deck to continue to grow and innovate. This deck was very ahead of its time as well as very behind its time in the stretch of how its mechanic operates versus the cards we had access to and things of that nature. This deck has always got a very high you know power output of what it can do. It's a very very high you know power output range deck where it can just do whatever it wants as long as it's not stopped. Um, so this deck constantly has room for innovation and I want it to continue seeing it evolve as time goes on. I never want this deck to die out completely because even though I may never take it to a large scale event like a YCS or something again just because it's a little bit strange to compete against the metagame, it's still something I would easily take to regionals, it's something I would always, you know, just keep in the back of my mind as something that can be innovated it's just a project for me. But anyway, as always guys, comment, rate, subscribe, click and add if you had not, I'd greatly appreciate it. I'd understand if you don't want to, and that's completely fine, but it would help me out. And if you want to help me out, that would be the way to do it. But anyway guys, that's all for this video, and take care.